On the discussion board, you probably determined that this quadratic equation would be the trickiest one to solve. It is not easily found, nor is it easily converted into vertex form, and graphing wouldn't give you the precise solutions. So today we're going to talk about a fourth method for solving quadratic equations, and that method is called the quadratic formula. To use the quadratic formula, all you need are the a, b, and c values of your standard form equation. This is the quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of the quantity b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. And again, to use the quadratic formula, all you need to do is determine your a, b, and c values and plug them into the formula. It may look complicated, but you will get used to substituting your values into the formula. Please note, you do not need to memorize this formula. Whenever you need to use it, it will always be provided. You simply need to know how to use it. However, before we start applying the quadratic formula, we do want to understand where it comes from. And we can derive the formula simply by completing the square. So we're going to do that using these two examples. On the left, you have a normal quadratic equation, and on the right, you have standard form. The first thing we're going to do on the left is factor out our leading coefficient of 2. When I factor the 2 out of all three terms, I divide all three of them by 2. The expression inside the parentheses is what remains when we factor the 2 out. If I distributed the 2 to all three terms, we would get back to the original equation. We're going to do the same thing on the right and factor our leading coefficient of a out of all three terms. ax squared divided by a is simply x squared, and you can see that I've taken b and c and divided them by a as well. Going back to the left, my expression inside the parentheses is multiplied by 2, and I want to get rid of that 2, so I can use inverse operations and divide both sides of my equation by 2. That leaves me with the expression that was inside the parentheses, and conveniently, 0 divided by any number is simply 0, so 0 divided by 2 is 0. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing on the right. I divide both sides by a, and we're left with the expression inside the parentheses equal to 0, because 0 divided by a is simply 0. Now we can start completing the square. To complete the square, I know to take positive 6 and divide it by 2. That gives me my perfect square of x plus 3 squared. But 3 squared is equal to 9, so I need to subtract 9 to keep my equation equivalent to my original equation, and then I, I still add the 5. While you may not have solved it this way in your class, this is a helpful way of showing it given what we're doing with the standard form. I simplify my two constants and we get x plus 3 squared minus 4. I can look at my algebra tile model and get the exact same equation. We have a perfect square of x plus 3, but we only have 5 unit tiles so we need to take away 4 since it would have produced 9, and that's represented right here. We're now going to do the same thing on the right. We know we have to take plus ba and divide it by 2 to get our perfect square, just like we divided 6 by 2. I divide that by 2, and so I have b divided by 2a. But just like we subtracted 9, I need to subtract b divided by 2a squared we still have our plus ca. Now we can start solving our quadratic equations. I'm going to use inverse operations to move the 4 to the other side. I add 4 to both sides and we have x plus 3 squared equals 4. I'm going to do the same thing on the right because both of these terms are simply numbers. They just look complicated. And at any point during this video, you can pause it to think about what you are seeing on the screen. I'm going to use inverse operations and add b divided by 2a squared, 
and subtract C divided by A. I also decided to square my B, so you can see B squared and square my 2A. So we have 2 squared is 4 and A squared is A squared. I then am going to subtract CA. I want to write this side of my equation as a fraction. So I know that to add or subtract fractions, I need to have the same denominator. So I can multiply C over A by 4A squared divided by 4A squared because that equals one and I haven't changed my equation. This A will cancel out one of the A squareds. So we are left with B squared minus four times A times C because I just rearranged the, the four, the A and the C, which I can do with multiplication. Now we're going to solve. We're going to take the square root of both sides and the square root of the quantity x plus 3 squared is x plus 3, and the square root of 4 is 2, but we know that it's really plus or minus 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. I do the same thing on the right. I take the square root of both sides. On the right, you can see that I show that I'm taking the square root of the numerator and the denominator because I can simplify my denominator. So we have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, because I cannot simplify that, divided by 2a. Lastly, we write our solutions. On the left, we have x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2, because I used inverse operations to move the 3 to the other side. I could simplify this into two solutions but that's not the point of the video. On the right, I moved the positive b over 2a to the other side by subtracting it, and you now see the quadratic formula. This is one way of seeing it, but you may also see it written this way because you have two fractions with the same denominator, so the numerators were combined in the right example, and this is the form I typically use. Now that you know where the quadratic formula comes from, we'd like you to practice applying it to solve an equation. This equation is provided on your capture sheet. The first thing you should do is figure out what your A, B, and C values are. So go ahead and fill in number one on your capture sheet with the A, B, and C values. Pause this video while you do so. Since there is no number in front of x squared, we know that a equals 1. We have 1 x squared. b is positive 5. And we know that in standard form, we add c. So since we see minus 14, we know c is negative 14. On your capture sheet, you have the quadratic formula, and you can modify it by substituting these values into it in step 2. Go ahead and do so now. Pause the video while you do. Your formula should now look like this. Wherever you saw B, A, or C, you substituted these values into the formula. It is important to include these parentheses around A and C to remind you that you are multiplying 4 times 1 times negative 14. At this time, simplify the discriminant, the part that is underneath the radical sign, and the denominator in step number three. Pause the video while you do so. Your formula should now look like this. Please note that when you're subtracting four times one times negative 14, you actually have a negative times a negative, hence, plus 56. The simplification of that, 25 plus 56 is 81. So at this point, we can now create two equations to solve for our solutions. We have negative 5 plus 9, which is the square root of 81, divided by 2, and we also have negative 5 
minus 9 divided by 2. We simplify those expressions to get our final answers of x equals 2 and x equals se negative 7. One way to check our work would be to substitute each one of those one at a time into the equation. And when you do so, your answer should equal 0. At this time, complete this process on your capture sheet and move on to the next activity.